Okay, so I'd like you to have a scarf, specifically a, a scarf. It will feel better for what we're doing than a yoga belt. Um, but if you don't have one nearby to dig through, you know, drawers and drawers to find one, you'll be fine without it. But if you can, maybe you even pause um, the live stream for a moment to get your scarf. So a scarf um, that we'll use starting at the very beginning and then have a chair nearby. I'm guessing everybody has a chair. So we're going to start off with the scarf. And the reason I like the scarf is it just, it has more surface area than a belt. And you're going to make it, you know, about as wide as it can be and have it going behind your low back ribs. So you can see mine, it's kind of just above my waistline and I can feel the, the bones of my rib cage pressing into it. And then you'll come down to sit either on your shins or in a cross-legged position. Uh, slide your hands down the straps enough so that you can tuck in one side and then the other so the um, scarf is tightly woven around your low back ribs. And then you'll drop your chin toward your chest so let your spine be slightly um, overly exaggerating the kyphotic curve. And then you'll soften the jaw and the tongue. Try to slacken even in your eye sockets and ears. And then you'll start to breathe very deliberately in and out of the nose, but sending the breath into the back of the belt or scarf deliberately. So you might feel like your ribcage is trying to burst through the scarf. So I'm quite tightly hugging the scarf around me. Take about four more breaths like that on your inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, directly into the low back lungs and ribs. Exhale, about five. Inhale five, maybe you pull the scarf a little more taut so you can very easily feel the feedback of it into the back ribs. Exhale slowly five. Continue like this for these last two breaths or so. Bring your full attention to the breath. Try to hear what your breath sounds like, not because you've made it louder, but because you've sharpened your attention towards it. And obviously this is foreboding. We will use this um, idea of breathing into the low back ribs as we go through class. So you can move your scarf off to the side, but close by. You'll bring your thumbs to close off your ears. Don't close them just yet. Hover them there so you can hear my instruction. And then just let your fingertips land wherever they do on the top of the skull. And just look at me for a moment. You're gonna keep your hands like this as you come into a child's pose. When I tell you to, you'll seal the ears closed. And the idea is that you're shutting out the sounds from the external world so that you can make your internal sounds sharper, your awareness of them sharper. So go ahead, come into that position. You'll take five breaths like this. And when you're finished, you'll just release your arms down by your side. Even though you're not closing your ears anymore, can you still keep the attention very clearly inwards on that internal breath sound? <clears throat> and then you'll roll your way up slowly. So draw the chin towards the chest. Take a five count slow inhale to stack the spine, come upright. And once you come upright, back bend. Externally rotate your vertical columns of the lungs to draw the heart upwards. 
And then you'll keep your heart upwards, but tuck your chin. This will feel sort of like a body roll, if you know that. So the heart stays up, chin towards the chest, and then you're gonna sink your heart center back. Sink the belly back, the lowest part of the belly as you come back forward. The crown of the head might be more on the floor. Reach your arms straight forward and you're gonna come into a downward facing dog on your mat. Okay. Tap right back into your breath. Maybe you close your eyes to help. Imagine your ears are closed. Hear your breath in and out. And then the next time you exhale, don't let your shoulders move forward. Keep resisting them back, back, back. Same idea as down dog as you bend your knees to hover. They might even tap the mat. And then don't let your shoulders come forward as you slowly straighten the legs on your inhale. Hips go further up and back. And we'll do that four more times. If your hands are slipping, grab on the sides of your mat, pull it forward and apart. Bend your knees to hover barely a millimeter off the mat. Hips go way up and back. And then you'll inhale, start to straighten the legs. Don't let your shoulders go forward over the wrists at all. Three more, exhaling. Draw your thigh bones back as you breathe in. Exhale, last two. Hear your inhalation, draw your hips further back. And last one, exhale. Bend the knees, shoulders do not move forward even a millimeter as you straighten the legs on your inhale. And now imagine someone has grabbed your outer thigh bones and is pulling them back in space for you. Start with either hand, just notice which. As you walk your hands back in space, imagine your hands are walking back because someone is pulling your pelvis back and your thighs back kindly. Good, stay here in the forward fold. Come back to that same position with your thumbs hovering over your ears, your fingertips on the crown of the head. In a moment, you'll seal the ears. So listen, you're gonna take just three breaths, five counts in, five counts out, and when you're finished, you'll roll up to stand in mountain pose. Close the ears, take your three breaths. So we'll be at the back of the mat. Seal your palms together at the center of the chest. Imagine your scarf is draped behind your back ribs. Take a smooth breath right into the low back lungs. You might even round your spine a little bit to exaggerate it. And then a calm exhale out. Replace the thumbs to hover over the ears and we'll take an ohm with your ears plugged. Take your breath in, plug the ears. Okay, you'll release your arms by your sides, breathe in, externally rotate the lungs away from the midline, right lung spins to the right, left lung spins to the left, they bolster the heart up behind it and then your body roll exhale chin to chest sink the heart back sink above the navel then the navel then the low belly bend your knees as you roll all the way down imagine someone is pulling your hips and thighs back lead with your right hand go very slowly it'll take a couple of breaths to walk forward to down dog they're pulling your thigh bones back you're helping them by resisting the thighs back Keep as much weight in your feet as you can. We will eventually land in downward facing dog. Send your thighs up and back, up and back so much that you feel maybe a little bit of spaciousness or kind of a breath of fresh air in the front of your hip sockets. And then draw your sit bones towards your second toe mounds. Thank you, Patty Towson. And you can also free up your tailbone at the same time. 
Take one more breath, more weight back in your feet. Bending the knees might help if you need it. And then the next time you exhale, bend your knees. Can you hear the breath as though your ears were closed? They'll hover right over the mat. You'll inhale, come forward into plank pose. Exhale, lightly step your right foot to the right thumb and lower the back knee to hover. Inhale, sweep your arms up overhead and stay. Try not to lower the left knee all the way down if you can help it. Scissor the right foot energetically back, left foot forward. And then try a little bit of a back bend. It's still early, but can you externally rotate the lungs to help you bolster the heart up? One more breath. When you exhale, lower the hands down, straighten your right leg about three breaths here in your pyramid. If the floor feels far away and you don't have blocks, Bring your hands up on the shins. I kind of like this variation because it makes you use the legs more because you don't have the support of the arms and hands. One more breath. Okay, you'll lower the fingertips down. Shorten your stance just a little bit. Spin your left heel in so you'll be in goddess pose with your hands off to the left side of your mat. Bend your knees. Reach under with your right hand. Draw your right sit bone underneath you. Reach under with your left hand, draw your left sit bone underneath you. And then put a little weight on the tip of your coccyx, the tail. Heavy it down as you roll your way up slowly. Once you get there, lift your right arm up alongside the ear. Bend the elbow and you'll grab your right elbow with your left hand. And then try to press the elbow tip up into the palm of your left hand as you sink the hips low. Keep drawing your sit bones underneath you without over tucking, but pressing your knees towards the wall behind you now. And you'll take one more breath, try to lift your right elbow up a little higher. When you breathe in, straighten the legs, lift the arms up, press your palms together. And then you'll exhale, just separate the hands and come back into goddess in your legs. This is sort of like a windswept motion over to a version of extended side angle. Keep your left toes pointing to the left edge of your mat. You're just sweeping over towards your right leg. Keep putting the right buttock and the left buttock underneath you and reach your right wrist longer than your left wrist. One more breath. When you exhale, you'll come to a low lunge to the right foot. Tap your back knee down. Like you're doing upward facing dog, but don't change this right leg. Come high on your fingertips and try to draw your chest forward and up. There is a bit of the pelvis coming forward, but not a collapsing or a surrendering, sometimes people say. Can you instead find some integration of the low belly tissues back towards the back edge of your pelvis? At the same time, draw the heart forward and up. One more breath. And when you exhale, We'll meet in an all fours position, hands and knees. Breathe in, stay high on your fingertops, draw your pelvis forward, and again, think up dog. Without moving your knees, draw them energetically forward, and then bend your knees like you're trying to tap the back of your head with your toes. Take one more breath, belly goes up to throat. And then you'll exhale, Come back to child's pose. You have one breath here to tap into the inner sound of the breath. On your inhale, come back forward to hands and knees and we'll meet in down dog as you breathe out. Lead with your right hand. Again, imagine you have to walk your hands back because somebody is drawing your pelvis back or magnets are pulling your thighs back. We'll meet at the back edge of the mat. Bend your knees. You'll exhale and roll your way up to stand. At the top, back bend. Inhale. Exhale, body roll, chin to chest. Heart goes back. Belly goes back. Rolling all the way down. Lead with your left hand, but the thighs stay resisting back. So take a couple of breaths. We'll do this on the flow later. But right now you have lots of time to keep your attention in loading the weight in your feet as much as you can back in the heels. They might need to lift eventually. That's okay, keep drawing the thighs back. And take a breath in, 
More weight back in the feet. And as you exhale, bend the knees just to hover over the mat. Inhale, stay low in the pelvis. Come forward to plank. Exhale, step the left foot to the left thumb. Bend your right knee just to barely hover off the mat. Push into your feet. Lift the arms up about three breaths here. Hug right foot forward, left foot back. Especially right hip point up towards your right nipple. One more breath. Maybe a little back bend. Lower your hands to frame the front foot, straighten the leg. About three breaths. Can these breaths be as calm as the first five count breath we did at the very beginning? At the bottom of this exhale, release your hands down. Shorten your stance just a little bit by drawing the back foot an inch forward. And then turn your right heel in, right toes out will be in this goddess shape. Reach under one more time like this. Draw left sit bone under, right sit bone under. Heavy the tail and round your way up to stand. You'll reach the left arm up this time. Grab onto the left elbow with the right center palm. And then push the elbow up into the right hand. Can you feel your right lung stay just as long as your left lung? So there's no side bend. One more breath. Okay, you'll release the arms. Breathe in, straighten the legs. Press your palms together overhead. And then separate the arms so they're shoulder width apart. Rebend the knees as you exhale on goddess. And then wind sweep your way over to this strange, short, and turned out variation of extended side angle. Reach your left wrist longer than your right. Press into the ball of your right foot to help you draw both buttock bones underneath you. One more breath. Reach, reach, reach. And we'll come to a little lunge to the left foot. Tap the back knee down, high on the fingertops. Imagine up dog in the whole trunk, from your pubic bone to your throat. Good. Finding some integration at the low belly, breathing in, lift the heart up, 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 up. And then, and then when you exhale, we'll meet on a hands and knees position. Good. Say hi on the fingertops. Inhale, roll your way forward into an upward facing dog. And try to drag your knees energetically forward as you drag your hands energetically back. And you'll take about one more breath. We'll meet back in child's pose. Rest your head. You have one clear breath in. Imagine the ears are closed. Hear the sound as you breathe out slowly. Okay, you'll come to hands and knees, all fours. And then as you exhale, lead with your left hand. Imagine someone's drawing your thighs back in space. Then when you get to your forward fold at the back edge of the mat, You'll bend your knees and slowly roll your way up to stand with a heavy tail. And then turn it into a back bend as you breathe in. Lungs come behind you. Exhale, body roll, chin to chest, hollowing out the front body as you roll back down. Lead with your right hand. You have one inhale to make your way to down dog. And then exhale, bend your knees to hover on the mat. Inhale, plank. Exhale, step the foot to the right thumb. Lower the back knee to hover. You'll inhale, lift your arms up. Lift the left hip and back bend. Exhale, lower your hands and straighten your legs as you fold. You have one inhale to find goddess pose in the legs. Bend the knees. Exhale, round your way up. Inhale, right elbow up. Grab it with the left hand. And then as you exhale, shift into this extended side angle, straightening the left leg. Take another breath. Pull your own right elbow away from you. 
and on your exhale you'll come to low lunge to the right foot. Keep your right foot where it is, roll to the outer edge of your right pinky toe and tap your back knee down. Same thing, upward facing dog, high on the fingertops, your right knee is moving out to the right, almost like a pigeon. And then try bending your back knee. Draw your heart forward, scissor your right foot back, left knee forward and lift the chest. Good, we'll meet in child's pose. Just draw your right knee back in line with the left. Pause here. Breathe in smoothly. And a smooth exhale. Hands and knees. Breathe in. Down dog as you breathe out. Inhale. Lead with your right hand. Come back to the forward fold. Exhale. Roll your way up to stand. On your inhale, lift the chest into a back bend. Arms hang by the sides. Exhale, chin to chest, body roll. The heart stays lifted at first. On your inhale, lead with your left hand. Walk forward to down dog. Exhale, bend your knees to hover really low. Inhale, stay low in your plank. Step the left foot forward as you breathe out. Lower the back knee to hover. Inhale, raise the arms and back bend. Exhale, lower the hands, straighten your legs full. Breathe in, goddess, bend the knees, turn the toes out. Exhale, roll your way up. Inhale, the left elbow up, grab it with your right palm. And then exhale, push into your right foot to come to this extended side angle. You have an inhale here. Draw your left elbow further away. Left lung rolls under the right lung. Exhale, come to low lunge to your left foot. Tap the back knee down. Roll onto the outer edge of your left foot and let the knee drift out to the left. Okay, so start coming into an up dog, feeling high on your fingertops as you bend your right knee. You're not right on the kneecap. You're in front of it. Feel your right hamstring work. Pull your left foot energetically back. You might feel your outer left hip work to do that. One more breath. Back bend. Try to tap your toes to your head. <laughs> and then we'll meet in child's pose. You have one breath in and a breath out. We'll do this once more each side. Inhale forward, hands and knees. Exhale, adho mukha. Right hand leads you as you breathe in back to Uttanasana. Exhale, soft knees as you round up to stand. And inhale to lift up through a back bend. Exhale, keep the heart high, chin to chest as you roll down. Right hand leads you to down dog on your breath in. Exhale, bend your knees to hover. Plank, breathe in. Exhale, step the right foot forward, back knee hovers. Inhale, lift up, maybe a little more of a back bend. Exhale, plant your hands and straighten the legs. Goddess, as you breathe in, heels in, toes out. Exhale, roll your chest up right. Right arm up, grab the elbow as you inhale. Exhale, wind swept over to extended side angle. Breathe in, drag your right elbow further away. Draw your left butt underneath you. Exhale, come to low lunge, back knee down. Let your right knee open out to the right, rolling onto the pinky side of the foot. Think up dog, high on the fingertops, and bend your left knee, lift the chest. Exhale, this time right back into downward facing dog. Inhale, lead with your right hand as you walk back to forward fold. Exhale, roll your way up to stand. Inhale, lift the chest back then. Exhale, body roll your way back down. Left hand leads you to a downward facing dog on your inhale. Exhale, bend the knees to hover. Plank pose, inhale. Step left foot to left thumb, lower the back knee to hover, exhale. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the chest. Exhale, straighten the legs, 
and fold. Goddess, breathing in. Exhale, roll up through the trunk. Left elbow up as you breathe in. Straighten your right leg, exhale, like extended side angle. Breathe in, hug your right seat underneath you. And exhale, low lunge, back knee down. Roll over the pinky side of the left foot. This is a couple breaths for this up dog variation. Your hips are gonna wanna sway over to the left. Wag the tip of your tail over to the right. Hug left foot back, right knee forward, lift the chest. And we'll meet right back in the downward facing dog. Close your eyes, take a breath in. Watch the breath warm as it comes behind your nasal passages to the heart. And then you'll exhale, empty the breath out. Either walk or step your feet up to the top of the mat. Inhale, stretch your chest forward, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale and fold, release the neck. Breathe in, sweep your arms up, Ardha Vahasthasana. Exhale, in mountain. Breathe in, circle your arms up. Forward fold as you breathe out. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, hop or step right and then left. Chaturanga or skip it. Inhale, any size back bend. If your knees are down, bend them. Exhale, Adho Mukha, down dog. About three breaths. And at the bottom of your next exhale, you'll either hop or step right and then left, breathe in, stretch the chest forward. Exhale, fold in Uttanasana. Circle the arms overhead, inhale. Mountain, breathing out. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Breathe in, chest forward. Exhale, hop or step left and then right. Inhale, back bend of your choice. Breathe out into down dog, Adamuka. And about three more breaths here. Bottom of this exhale, hop or step left in the right. Inhale, reach your chest forward. Exhale and fold. Inhale, circle the arms overhead. Breathe out in mountain. About two more minutes on your own. You can stay with sun salutations with me. I won't talk, but I'll do them with you. Or you could take any variations, maybe pigeon, maybe an inversion, or resting in child's pose.
You have about one more minute left, one more round or so. We'll meet at the front edge of the mat in the shape of your choice. Just have your scarf nearby. You have about six more breaths to meet us there. No rush. Up at the top of your mat if you're not there already. Grab your scarf and we'll meet standing. Okay, so you'll take your scarf, hold on to it so it's almost like a jump rope in front of you. So you're holding on near the ends and you can easily step your foot on. So the more surface area you have, so the yoga belt usually is just on your heel or just on the ball of the foot. See if you can get a big sort of hammock <clears throat> for yourself in the fabric. Okay, and then you'll hold on tight with the arms down by your sides. As there's a pulling down into your hands, try to resist away from that by keeping your chest lifted and the back lungs full of breath. And then you'll slowly sl start to lift your right leg up in front of you. Bend your elbows so you're kind of like holding on to reins here. Draw the elbows back. Lift up the whole heart organ. And now try to find the breath in your low back ribs where we had the scarf at the start of class. Push your foot into the scarf as the scarf pulls your foot back so it's plugging your right femur bone into the socket for you. Elbows go back, triceps go back. Taking just about one more breath. Okay, and then you'll straighten through your arms as you push the foot away from you. Step in front of the scarf with your right foot and in front of the scarf with your left foot. So now it's behind you like it really is a jump rope. Okay, and then you'll step your left foot into the hammock of the scarf. Again, try to get as much surface area touching the foot as you can. And then pull up on the scarf. The arms are right by your sides, helping you compact your outer hips in. And then you'll push the foot back into the belt as you hinge over your right hip. Bend your right knee a little bit. And then move your chest forward as you push the left foot back. And then my elbows are almost bending here to pull really firmly on the scarf so that it's as though my left heel has, my whole left foot has a wall to press into. Good. Okay, keep this, but start to bend your left knee. Do not let it move out to the left. It's gonna want to. Push the foot into the belt. Your elbows are bending as you bend the left knee. Inner left knee up towards the ceiling. Good. Let your left knee open. See what that feels like. And then hug it back to the middle. Okay, you're going to re-straighten the leg, push the scarf away from you, feel your arms straighten, and then like a seesaw, you'll come back up to stand. Step in front of the scarf. Now wrap the scarf around your hands a couple of times. Pull the scarf apart as you reach it behind you. So now you're getting a little shoulder opener for the fronts of the shoulders. Try not to let the ribs bow forward. Instead, breathe into the low back ribs. Our very first thing we did at the start of class, imagine there's a scarf there. And then lift the arms up, pause where it feels kind of most interesting to you. And then imagine someone is pulling the scarf away from you and it makes you back bend more, but really mindfully. I like to sort of bend my knees, notice where your pelvis is tucking, 
or scooping way back. Can you find something more neutral? One more breath, reach back, 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 back and up. And then you'll lift the scarf overhead and drop it in front of you again like the jump rope. You'll unravel the scarf from around your hands. This time you're gonna step your left foot into as much fabric as you can. Push down with your left foot so you're standing all the way down on the mat and pulling up with your hands. And then pull up so much that the left foot hovers and you start to bring the left leg straight forward. Okay, and then bend your elbows. You might even wrap the, the scarf around your hands if it feels better to you, it does to me. Pull firmly, elbows go back as you push your left foot into the scarf like it's a wall giving you feedback. And then breathe into your low back lungs. Remember the thighs going back and down dog. Can you feel that here in your standing right leg? Thigh bone back. Back of heart lifting. Okay, if you have the belt wrapped around your hands, unravel it and then straighten through your elbows as you push your left foot down back to the floor. Step in front of your scarf, the left foot, and then feed your right foot forward and through. Now you'll put your right foot in the hammock of the scarf behind you. Pull onto the scarf. Your right foot has something very solid to press into. Soften your left knee as you come back into your warrior three. Use your arms on your outer hips to help you compact in. Push your right foot back, heart forward in opposite direction. Good, and then I kind of bend my elbows up to the ceiling so I can pull a little bit more, give my right foot something very firm to press into. It feels very stabilizing for me. Okay, keep the leg behind you. Start to bend your right knee, but don't let the knee tip out to the side. Your elbows will bend up to the ceiling and push your foot into the scarf. Push, push, push. Outer left hip back, inner right knee up. And now just for a moment, feel what it feels like to let the right knee drift out to the right, and then use your inner thigh muscles, your adductors to hug back in. Good, okay, slow motion with a bent left knee. You'll straighten the right leg, come back upright, Step your right foot in front of you, loop the scarf around your hands, and then draw the arms behind you as you pull your belt apart vigorously. And then any amount of back bending here. Can you keep the weight back in your heels rather than thrusting the pelvis forward? Like you're doing a trust fall. Go up and back with the heart. Lungs externally rotating from your midline. If you took Patty's workshop, you'll know just what I mean. I think many of you have. One more breath. Okay, you'll come upright to stand. Pull the scarf apart. Lift it up and overhead, and then bring it in front of you. Okay, so move your strap off to the side. We're gonna do a pretty traditional Surya B variation. Bring your feet to touch for chair pose. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Breathe in, stretch your chest forward. Exhale, hop or step right back to down dog, no vinyasa. Empty of breath, spin your left heel in and down on your mat as you step the right foot to the right thumb. Take a sweeping inhale to lift your arms up. You're either in warrior one or high lunge if you choose. Exhale, lower the hands. Chaturanga if you want it. Otherwise, you could hold plank or side plank. And we'll meet in downward facing dog the next breath out. Empty your breath, spin your right heel in and down. Step the left foot to the left thumb. Use your patient inhale to float your chest up. Lift the arms. Exhale, vinyasa of your choice. Inhaling. We'll meet in down dog as you breathe out. Inhale, lift the heels up. Exhale, bend your knees. Hop or step your way to the top of the mat. Right into a chair pose as you breathe in, no flat back. Right into a forward fold on your exhale. 
hop or step into down dog, no vinyasa. Spin your left heel in and down, empty your breath. Inhales, coming up into warrior two, right foot forward. You have your exhale to come through a vinyasa of your choice. Inhale, maybe back bend. And exhale, adhonga, empty of breath, right heel in and down, step the left foot forward as you breathe in to warrior one. Breathe out, vinyasa if you want. Inhale. Exhale. Downward facing dog, empty of breath. Either hop or step your feet to the top. Inhale to chair pose, no flat back. Breathe out, forward fold. On empty, you hop or step back to down dog. Left heel comes down, right foot forward as you breathe in. Warrior one. Vinyasa of choice, breathing out. Inhale. Exhale. Empty your breath, right heel in and down, left foot forward. And inhale to come up, warrior one. Exhale, vinyasa or skip it. Exhale, down dog, hop or step forward at the bottom of your exhale. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hop or step back. Empty of breath, left heel down, right foot forward and you'll go on your own. Two more rounds, right and then left. It's just warrior one with an optional vinyasa in between. If you don't know it, I'll be doing it with you here. Or you can just make it up. If you prefer to rest, do so. top of the mat in any position you'd like. Meet us there in the next three or four breaths. Whatever position you're in, in a moment you'll seal your ears, fingertips over the crown of the head, and you'll take three five count breaths. So go ahead, seal the ears, fingers overhead. you'll release the hands and you'll make your way up to stand in mountain if you're not there already. Okay, so last round of standing poses. If you liked using the belt um, before and, and you wanna stick with that, do so. Otherwise, we're gonna use no belt together. Okay, so do the stand in mountain pose. Shift the weight over into your left foot but keep the left thigh moving back. Try not to dump the weight in the left hip. It might want to hike. Okay, and then you'll start, imagine your right foot is in the hammock of the scarf. 
arms are just down by your sides. You're trying to lift the leg without bending it and without using your hands for now. Good, taking just about one more breath. See what it looks like without the support of your arms or hands. And then you'll change that. You'll bend the knee, yogi toe lock, and extend the leg forward. Lift your left arm up alongside your left ear. Can you feel your left thigh bone moving back and your right shoulder head moving back in line with the left? Imagine your right foot is pushing into the hammock of the scarf. Take one more breath, lift your left wrist up higher. Okay, without dropping the leg, let go of it. And then like a pendulum, you'll swing the right foot down. Step onto it. Okay, tip your way forward into warrior three. Wrap your outer right hip back. Imagine you have the support of the belt for your left foot to push into. Now point your left foot, right knee soft. That's your standing leg. And then bend your left knee and see if you can grab onto the foot behind you. Push your left shin away from you and reach your chest forward without letting your left knee open out to the left. Hug the left knee in. Good, keep your right knee really soft. Push your left foot back. Maybe you feel yourself developing a, a heart opener or a back bend here. And then as you push into your hands more and more, you'll release your right hand, push into the left hand with your left foot and lift your right arm up. Take a half Gomukhasana right arm. Imagine your left hand is on your right elbow. Lift your elbow up higher and press your left foot into left hand. Try to lift your low belly up, lift your heart up, press your head into the back, the back of your head into your right forearm. One more breath. Good. Slowly we'll land in a low lunge. And then you'll turn all 10 toes to the left for Prasarita Padottanasana. And then here it felt good to me just to sort of sway my hips a little side to side. A couple of breaths to do that. There's no right or wrong way to do it, just kind of exploring. Okay, and then you'll take your left hand right underneath your left nose, reach your right arm out to the right, and as though you're coming into side plank, press down through your left hand and try to energetically pull it to your left, toward your back foot, as you open up into a twist. And then let your left hip dip. It's not a collapsing into your outer right hip, but can you let the left side of the sacrum sort of slope down towards the floor? And then drag your left hand energetically to the left as you open up the right arm a little more. Good, and now start to elevate your left pelvis. So you're probably gonna come out of the twist a little bit just to see what it feels like with very level hips. Draw your left buttock to the left and lift it up towards the ceiling, but keep the pull of the left hand to your left. One more breath, reach up and up and up through your right wrist. Good, lower your right hand down. Turn your heels and toes out like a goddess. And then you'll roll your way up. All right, right arm up overhead. Bend your right elbow. Left arm behind you, maybe you take a full Gomukhasana. You could always use your scarf and grab onto it, sort of pulling it apart. Press the back of your skull into your right forearm. Separate your feet out a little wider in this goddess, and then come to your extended side angle variation, reaching through your right elbow, hugging both sit bones underneath you. So your left leg is as much in external rotation as your right leg. Reach your right elbow longer and longer and longer, right sideways longer. You could stay like this or lower the right forearm on the thigh, left arm overhead, and this just felt unique to me. It felt like something new in the body and interesting, but if you're really craving a regular old extended side angle, then turn your left toes forward. Good, taking one more breath, press the ball of your left foot, especially the big toe side, towards the back edge of your mat. Okay, and then meet us in a low lunge. 
Good, come through a plank pose. Lower your knees and then you'll come all the way down to the floor or you could come down through a chaturanga. Kick your left heel toward your seat so you're all the way down on your belly. Reach back and grab the left foot. Reach your right arm straight forward and bend the elbow so your right hand might come towards the top of your right shoulder blade. Okay, and then you'll press your head up into your right forearm as you press the left foot back. Don't let the ne left knee wing out to the side. Good, keep your right elbow reaching straight forward and the back of your neck long. So you're floating your head, your chest up off the floor for a kind of Shalabhasana, Dhanurasana variation. Press the left foot back, press the head into the forearm. Good, one more breath, reach your right elbow forward and your left knee straight back, left foot straight back. Good, you'll lower your way down onto the mat. Plant your hands and then come into a child's pose this will be just a couple breaths and you'll bring your hands, the backs of your hands, onto the low back ribs where the scarf was at the start of class. Breathe and puff the breath up into your hands. Okay, and then you'll slide the hands forward. Come to downward facing dog and either hop or step your feet up to the top of the mat. One more side to go. Either round or hinge your way up to stand. Arms by your side. Imagine you have the hammock around the sole of your left foot. With a straight leg, lift your left leg up. It's a long lever, so it's challenging. And then just notice, is your left hip hiking way up? Can you even out the pelvis a little more? Press your left foot into an imaginary scarf. And then you'll bend the left knee. You'll get tall off the foot. Straighten the leg any amount, or again, you're using your scarf. Draw your left shoulder blade back. You might take your right hand behind your left buttock and try to draw your left sacrum back into your right hand. Eventually lift your right arm up. As calm as our breaths were at the start of class. Five counts in, one more. And five counts out, take your time. Keep the leg right where it is. Try not to bend your right knee. Thigh back and then release the hands. Like a pendulum, the left leg swings down. Step onto your left foot. Arms by your side, imagine you're holding the scarf. Push your right foot into the scarf as you tip forward with a soft left knee. Good. Keep breathing here. Point your right foot. Bend your right knee. Don't let it wing out to the right. Grab onto the right foot with both hands if you can. Otherwise, you just keep reaching for it. Press your right foot away from you without the belly collapsing to the floor. Breathe into your low back ribs. That will help. One more breath, press your right foot away. Maybe you feel yourself coming more into a back bend here. Good, keep hold of the foot with your right hand. Release the left arm and lift the left arm up. Half Gomukhasana, bend the elbow up to the ceiling. Align your right knee in line with the left and push your right foot down into your right hand as you go up with the center of your heart, up with the left elbow. Press your head into the left forearm. Keep the elbow moving into the midline. Notice if the belly is collapsing. Sweep the belly tissues up towards the heart. One more breath. Okay, we'll meet in a low one. Just hover your way down. Straighten your legs as you turn all 10 toes to the right. Prasarita, and just a couple breaths again to get soft and sort of fluid through the hips, swaying side to side. And then strong legs. Hug your feet into an imaginary, really wide yoga block. Plant your right hand down under your right nose, high in the fingertops or palm down. And then like you're coming into side plank, reach your left arm out to the left, pull your right hand energetically to the right, 
to help you turn and turn to the left. And let your pelvis be uneven without collapsing. So there's a little bit of intelligence of right inner thigh hugging towards the outer thigh, but your right sacrum is sloping to the floor. One more breath. Imagine someone is gently tugging your left wrist up to the ceiling. Okay, now change this. Start to wag the tip of your tail to your right to help your right buttock move up as high to the ceiling as the left. And again, you might come out of the twist a little bit, but keep pulling your right hand energetically to your right and revolving using the sides of your waistline. One more inhale. Lower the left hand down. Turn the heels in and toes out. Bend your knees and come up to goddess pose. Left elbow up, right arm behind the back. Gomukhasana of any variation. If you have the hands interlaced or if you're using your scarf, pull the hands apart from one another. Okay, separate your feet out a little wider. Push into the big toe of your right foot towards the back short edge of your mat. Straighten your right leg. You'll be in a weird extended side angle variation. Lean your head back into the left forearm. Draw your right buttock underneath you. Left elbow long. Stay here or left forearm on the thigh, right arm overhead. Stay here or come to regular extended side angle. One more breath. Okay, we'll meet in a low lunge. Spin your back heel high. Plank pose any way you want to get down to the floor. Draw your right heel towards your seat. Grab on with the right hand. Pubic bone heavy to the mat. Left arm, like the top arm of Gomukhasana. Crawl your left elbow forward. Okay, now press the back of your skull into your left forearm to lift your way up. Press your right foot back into your right hand so the heel moves away from your seat. Try to keep the chest square. And then head goes up into the forearm, but not by tilting your chin forward. Pubic bone down. Right knee hugging to the midline. Breathe into your low back lungs, or are they compressed here? Puff them up with breath. Slowly release your way down. Plant your hands, and then we'll come to hands and knees. Okay, so. Take your blanket, if you have sensitive knees. And then you'll come right onto the blanket. So you could do this whole next thing just with your hands down uh, on your mat, like an all fours position. Otherwise, grab your chair. Everybody have your scarf in your body if you're using one. Okay. So, on your hands and knees, thread your right knee in front of the left. So the legs are sort of like Gomukhasana. And then just come up to stand on your shins Hug your outer hips in. Press your outer shins towards one another and try to lift your frontal hip points. Okay, so keep that integrity in the hips, outer hips hugging in. And then you might need to adjust where your chair is in space, but I'd like you to come onto your elbows so that just the front of your forehead lands on the edge of your chair. This is kind of like a shoulder opener. Good, press down through your shins, hug your outer hips in, and press your elbows down into the chair vigorously. Okay, move your right shin slightly forward. It will sort of look like a pigeon shin. And then press into your right shin as you lift your left leg up behind you. If you have baggy pants on, they might get in your way. So the left leg comes up, and you're pressing your elbows into the chair vigorously. Energetically pull your right knee back towards the back edge of your mat. 
Don't let your left knee open. Kick the heel towards your seat. Good, and then crawl your elbows maybe a little further forward. Press through your fingertops and draw your belly up towards your spine. One more breath like this. Good, you'll lower the left shin back down and then walk up onto your hands. Good, we're just gonna switch sides. So your left knee comes in front of the right. The legs are like gomukhasana legs, trying to find your balance. It's a little tricky if you're not used to it. Both hip points flashing forward and moving upwards. Outer hips hugging in. Hug your outer shins in towards the midline. Belly up. And then your chair is probably in the right spot this time. You'll walk forward, elbows onto the chair, press your fingertips together, and just let this be a bit of a shoulder open. It's nothing extreme. Press down, down, down into your elbows. Okay, now move your left shin a little bit forward, tiny bit out to the left, almost like pigeon. Okay, and then you'll float your right leg up without the belly dropping. You might need to walk your elbows a little further forward on your chair. Pick your inner right knee up and don't let the knee move out to the right. Good, outer left hip hugs back. Good, you have just one more breath. Okay, lower the right knee down and then come back upright. So you'll uncross your shins, move your chair off to the side. So you could take a forward folding kind of soft pigeon if you'd like, or you'll stay with me, have your um, scarf nearby. And we're gonna start off with the right shin forward. I'm not on the, the very front of my shin, it's kind of the lateral side of my shin, and I'm pressing well through my right pinky foot. I am not bringing my pelvis to the floor purposefully. So if you know how to do that and you want to, fine, it's just not what I'm teaching. Your pelvis is up high, you're pushing the floor away. And then for my back knee, I'm not right on top of the kneecap. I'm trying to be in front of it as I kick my left heel up towards my seat. So you'll take the, the scarf in your hands, have both sides of the belt in one hand so you have a loop. And then you're gonna try to hook the loop onto your left foot behind you. And it should feel nice, because again, it's that big hammock. So you have your hand out to the left with the belt. You're just gonna draw your elbow up alongside the ear like these gomukhasana arms. Maybe you grab on with both hands. Push your left foot into the belt and lift your right buttock especially away from the floor. You're welcome to walk your hands as far back as you want. Some of you might even be holding on to the foot. Push your left foot away from you, lift your belly, and now the hard part, breathe into your low back lungs as well as you did at the very start of class so you're not compressing or collapsing your kidneys. Good. Maybe walk your hands down a little lower, lift your elbows up a little higher, pubic bone up towards the throat. You'll retrace your steps. I like to bring my right hand onto my right thigh, swing the left arm out to the left, take the belt off, and then maybe some cat cows. You might sway your hips a little side to side, maybe child's pose. If you took the other version of pigeon, you'll also begin to switch. So now the left shin comes forward and it's at an angle. So my left foot is near my right hip point. My left knee is angled forward towards the front of my mat a little bit. And then I'm upright. I'm hugging my thigh bones, scissoring them towards one another vigorously. Okay, my right knee is on the blanket behind me, but I'm not bending right on my kneecap, just in front of it. Push the floor away, pubic bone up, already start to tap into the breath with the low back ribs. You'll bend your right knee, take your strap or belt around the front of the right foot however you best can. Both sides of the belt 
out to the right in your right hand, and then you'll swivel the arm up and back behind you. So the hands can crawl down on the belt as low as you'd like. Imagine there's a tether line from your elbow tips to your low belly flesh. And as your elbows go up, so does the low belly. Good. Pull in your right knee energetically forward on the mat. Notice if your right knee is bowing out to the right. You're going to stay about three more breaths very deliberately breathing into your low back lungs. Imagine your ears are closed and you could hear your own five count breath. One more in and one more out slowly. Okay, and then you'll move the belt off to the side. Come back to hands and knees. And again, whatever is feeling like a good counter pose to you. For me, it's a little bit of swaying of the hips with a little cat-cow, maybe shaking out the head. And then we'll meet in a child's pose. This is just three breaths. Nice and slow inhales and exhales. And then soften your jawline and your teeth. Could you even soften the top palate, the upper dome of the mouth? And you'll roll your way up to sit. And then shift your seat over to one side. Take a really easy Sukhasana. So um, if you're really into the Iyengar crossing at the middle of the shins, you can do that. Otherwise, just nice and easy. If you have blocks, you want, might want them behind you. And you're going to walk your hands back and see if perhaps you can come all the way down onto the elbows. If not, you bring your elbows onto blocks. And this will feel very different from the version where you're folding forward. Almost like the start of our body roll. Your heart is lifting, but your chin is soft to the chest. Push the floor away with your forearms. And then breathe a little bit of lightness or spaciousness in the inner front thighs. Some of you might want to come all the way down onto your back and maybe you grab opposite elbows or a cactus shape. It's just a couple more breaths. If you're all the way down on your back, Make this a little bit of abdominal work. You'll draw your chin towards your chest. Press down through the pinky sides of your feet. Reach your arms forward. Come up as high as you can. Some of you might be able to come all the way up. If not, you use your hands and we'll all eventually meet seated upright. You could make this a forward fold now or maybe you want a little bit of a twist. It's just three breaths. Inhale slowly. Calm breath out. Two more. You'll eventually make your way up to sit and just cross which shin is in front. And then you'll start to walk your way back. You could stay right up on your hands or you come onto the elbows. If you're on the elbows again, it does feel like that very beginning of a body roll. Press your forearms down, shoulder blades softly supporting you behind your heart, and then chin relaxed. 
If you did it on the other side, you'll come all the way down onto the back, anything you want with your arms. If you're all the way on the back, take one more breath. And then you'll try reaching the arms forward, pressing through the pinky sides of the feet. Strong belly to support you, coming all the way up to sit. And then you'll either forward fold or you'll twist three breaths. transition at the bottom of your next exhale. So if you want an inversion, take this next minute or so to do an inversion. Um, do something with your legs in neutral, so no like lotus or externally rotated thing, um, unless you're really craving it. Otherwise, as a counter pose, you'll keep your thighs really neutral. And then if you're not taking the inversion, <clears throat> you'll lie on your back with me, kick your legs up towards the ceiling, and try to grab your inner thighs behind you, so I'm wrapping my hands around, and I'm deliberately internally rotating my legs. You can do it with the use of the hands or not. So it will be the eyes of the kneecaps look towards one another. And then you'll just let your knees bend here. You could stay like this, or you'll grab onto the top of your left foot, and bring it into um, a half virasana leg as the right leg just kind of flops out to the side. And then if you have this half virasana leg, um, try wagging the tip of your tail towards your right heel. And then anything you want with the arms. It felt nice to me to keep my hands on my low front ribs and to try to inhale away from them towards the floor. Notice if you're in a big back bend, exaggerating your lumbar curve, try to lengthen the tail forward, your sit bones forward. Those of you in the inversion, you're about halfway through. And then if you're with me, just slide your right knee over on top, excuse me, your left knee over on top of the right. You'll be in a supine twist. This is just a breath, right hand onto the outer left leg. And then come back up through the middle, extend your legs up. Do that same thing, inner thighs spin behind you. Heels drop towards the seat. And then you'll grab onto your right foot and come to a half virasana leg. That's not for everyone, but if you know it, you come into it. Otherwise, the knees just kind of drift off to the left for a little supine twist. If you're in half virasana, trying to come out of an extreme low back bend, draw your tail towards the, what was the front edge of your mat. Sit bone toward your left heel a little. If you're in an active inversion, take just a couple more breaths and you'll make your way to your counter pose after. If you're on your back with me, one more breath here, away from the front ribs, down into the low back lungs. And you'll just slide your right knee over on top of the left, Left hand on top of the outer right leg. Pause here in the supine twist. Just a breath. If 
Okay, and then we will meet in Shavasana. You could do legs up the wall. You could take any variation in your legs. If you know you want more than like a four minute Shavasana, which is what I'm going to give you, um, just sign out now so that you can linger as long as you like and I won't disturb you. And as you settle in, slacken your jaw, soften your tongue, heavy your bones down through the floor beneath you. You might use your scarf over the eyes to help a little more pratyahara, keeping the light out. Very gently begin to deepen your breath. You push the floor away from you behind the low lungs with each inhale. either to stand your back or to roll up for our closing one. If you are coming up to sit, go whatever way you like, but do so very gradually. Finish with an OM. You can do it with your ears closed or not. One OM to finish. Take a deep breath in. Thank you so much, everybody.